Hello, my name is Emilio Salvador, and I'm the VP of Strategy and Developer Relations at GitLab. I have two predictions for 2026 that I expect to become real sooner rather than later. The first one is about the strategic AI collaboration between humans and AI. Uh, we are seeing that companies are adopting AI fairly quickly, but I believe that the winners won't be those who adopt AI faster. I believe the winners will be those who are more strategic about the way they implement AI across the entire software development life cycle. The companies who are smart and identify those places where we can maximize the benefits of AI and truly implement a 50-50 human agent collaboration are the ones who will be able to maximize and obtain the maximum benefits of AI. My second prediction is about something I call meta agents. I think of them as an agent of agents that will act and behave like any other team member. Uh, those agents will have an email account, an Slack channel, Slack account, you name it. They will be like any other team member that you can assign a task to, and they can complete those tasks with little information or little instructions. But in addition to that, what I expect those meta agents to be is proactive, like many of your our team, existing team members behave today. You don't expect to be assigned a task. In many cases, you just look for something that will require your help or your expertise. That proactiveness will be a game changer in the software development life cycle. Developers will no longer have to go and think about who I assign these to. That work can also be automated and we will have agents that work 24 seven in order to facilitate the entire process of software development. Hey everybody, my name is Matt Mullins. I am the adversarial subject matter expert here at Reveal Security and also the head hacker. These are my big predictions for the upcoming year. Um, the first thing I think that we're going to see more of is that we're going to see more adversaries utilizing AI to more of a full capability. And what do I mean by that? Do I think that they're going to be creating systems that auto hack things? Probably not. But what we will see is we're probably going to see the rise of things like more sophisticated deep fakes, which we've already seen the technology for that in the field. But that was more of like a prototype honeymoon phase. I think we might see more of that on an industrial scale. I think we're also going to see faster exploitation times. Um, a previous report that I just read, I believe, from CrowdStrike said that the exploitation time was significantly less last year. And then a recent statistic for this year was saying that it was one day or less. So I think that those things, using AI is going to allow attackers to move much faster with exploitation of things in the wild, prototyping of exploits, things that typically took a couple of days to develop or a team, will allow one malicious ransomware operator, operator to execute more succinctly and quicker. The other thing I would say that we're probably going to see is that we're going to see a bigger focus on identity. You know, and this is something that you know, I think is the byproduct of the, the blending into a hybrid environment with less of a on-prem footprint. Uh, as we see more of this focus on identity, there's going to be more products, more efforts, et cetera, to create a more robust security posture around identities as they move between on-prem and SaaS or platform as a service or whatever. That's something that we're actually focusing here on Reveal, where we're using identity and machine learning and outliers to identify anomalous activities in a way that hasn't been done before and is very novel. So, you know, check us out if you haven't. The last thing I think that we're probably going to see is we're probably going to see a rise of malwareless infe infe infections as well as malwareless attack processes. And a couple of years ago, we saw that with the Caesar, um, Caesar's Palace Casino breach. But we've also seen that as of recent with other attackers where they have called and claimed to have been from help desk and then installed something like TeamViewer or some other remote access tool that has been signed as you know something useful for IT or something that's been whitelisted as a whole. So instead of rolling their own malware, they're just using things that they know will be allowed into the environment, which reduces that development time we talked about earlier. So those are my big predictions. Keep your heads up and uh, stay frosty out there. I'm Tim Erlin, the VP of Product at Wallarm. 
Going into 2026, there are three predictions that I want to talk about. The first is around AI attacks. Now, it, it seems obvious that as we see a growth in AI applications and agents uh, and generative AI in general, that we're going to see more attackers targeting these applications and agents. So that's not really the prediction that I'm after here. I'm more interested in talking about how attackers are going to leverage AI to carry out more complex attacks. So if you imagine uh, a situation in which an attacker uh, needs to use multiple exploits chained together, um, unless the outcome of each of those steps is really deterministic, they're going to need a human in the loop today to decide what to do next at each step. AI really changes that. With generative AI, they can actually uh, employ an agent, for example, that can reason what those next steps might be given an objective. And so we're really gonna see a change in how attackers are using AI to carry out these, these complex multi-step attacks. The second prediction is really around market definition. So uh, today, customers, organizations tend to, to think about web application protection, web application security, API security, and AI security as three separate things for which they might need three separate tools. But they really center around a single customer problem. And that's protecting that customer's applications, regardless of whatever technology they use to deploy them. So in 2026, we're going to see the market start converging around that customer problem, as opposed to being focused on the technology or tools that customers might use to solve that problem. And that'll put pressure on the vendors to consolidate their capabilities as well. The third prediction is really around standardization in uh, AI security. There's a, a pattern here that we've seen in the past, and I, I know that, that AI feels like it's different from everything else, and we've never been in this position before, but we've certainly been in the position before where we've had a new technology come to market, have it feel like it's moving faster than any technology before, and people adopt it, companies are built around it, companies fail when the, the promises don't pan out, and ultimately it sort of, it levels out into this plateau of productivity, to borrow a, a Gartner hype cycle term, if you will. And we're gonna see the same pattern with, with generative AI. At some point in that pattern, the point that I'm saying is gonna occur in 2026, we start to see uh, security standards emerge in order to establish kind of a, a low bar or a minimum bar for securing that technology. So I think that's gonna to start to happen in 2026. We're gonna see the emergence of some standards around AI security. And personally, I'm betting on the standard A2AS, which you can see at a2as.org, uh, as a community-driven standard that's got research contributors from a bunch of different organizations, including Wallarm. Uh, but I think it's gonna be a standard that uh, we'll see adoption of in 2026. Hi, my name is Joe Kim, and I'm the president and CEO at Druid AI. And here's my three predictions for the coming year. Uh, my first prediction is that you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of reskilling that's going to be happening in the existing workforce. You know, one of the, the interesting stories that I recently had was I talked to one of the largest technology companies, and I was talking to the head of engineering at this specific company, and he came ran, running into me and saying, hey, look, Joe, you know what's amazing? Is that I, it's like I have hundreds of junior developers that are out there writing code for me. I was like, that's great. What's the, what's the bad thing about Agentic AI? And he actually mentioned, well, the bad thing is, like, it's like I have a hundred junior developers out there writing code for me, always asking me for feedback. And so as you can see, what you're going to end up uh, seeing as a lot of this Agenta capability becomes more and more valuable is that there's going to be a whole reskilling that you're going to need if you want to be able to not only utilize the technology, but be able to appropriately manage it to create value for an organization. The second prediction that I have is that with a lot of this proliferation of Agenta capabilities and a lot of this automation going live, there's going to be a huge shortage of data center capacity and there's going to be an explosion of cost around energy. But because the need is so high and the value is so high, what you're going to see is additional innovations around how to bring that energy cost lower and how to find the additional capacity for what is being generated in the enterprise. And the third and final prediction that I have is that with all of this application capability that exists today, one of the big questions that Satya Nadella, who's the CEO over at Microsoft, uh, pointed out was that if applications are really eating the universe, but if all the application value is starting to go into the LLM, 
what really is the new world of business applications. And I think with a lot of the chat capability and agentic AI capability, being able to be that interface between all of that information and wonderful data that's sitting in those business applications, you're going to see an up-leveling of value in terms of how that front end can be utilized to be able to pull additional insights and information. And so the entire universe of business applications is going to see a huge uplift in the coming year. So those are my three predictions for the coming uh, year in 2026. The landscape of incidents is shifting. This is in part due to AI. The CEO of AWS recently shared that 75% of code pushed to production is Gen AI, and that makes us developers more productive. A survey run at Microsoft, Accenture, and 100 other companies found that developers were 25% more productive. Now, this code can be high quality, but depending on how coding assistants are used and what guardrails are in place, the quality can be lower than human generated code. Statistically, the more you change a system, the more you increase the probability of breaking it. So we expect a number of incidents to increase. At Rootly, we're already seeing an increase of incidents from our customers. And that could be the reason. It's not the volume of incidents that might increase, but also how easy they will be to solve. Developers are becoming less familiar with their code bases. And because coding is less about writing lines of code and more about prompting AI to do the job. Where SREs could once ask developers to help troubleshoot something they wrote, that will increasingly not be the case. So SREs may have to handle more incidents with less help while their managers are asking them to do more because they have AI. But the good news is there's also a new breed of AI and features helping incident responders. Incident management platforms like Rootly are packed with AI powered features that make incident management much easier and faster. Monitoring and logging use machine learning to detect signals earlier, and a whole new class of tools called AI SRE is helping incident responders by automatically investigating root causes and even suggesting fixes. So finally, Gen AI is not only democratizing access to coding, not just for building, but also now for fixing. Customer support folks who usually rely entirely on devs can now hack their way through debugging and even fix bugs with coding assistance. So overall, while I believe the landscape of incidents is drastically shifting, the negative impact should be balanced by the positive.